It's Brian Preston, the money guy. All right, we've got a question from Greg. He says, what about behaviors for financial mutants? So this is a money behavior question. For example, I max out my 401k and IRA, but I probably spend a good 10% of my annual income on new tech and toys and like things that he wants. Is it normal to feel bad about spending money? Oh, man. What's I, your experience I, I with this, guys? I love this question because, you know, this is why I, I love us giving the 25%. Yep. Because, because pay yourself first. Because if you are, um, if you know that you're paying yourself first at a level that's healthy enough that you're going to be really to do what you want, when you want, and, and how you want, and when you reach financial independence, the rest just. Go have fun. Go build memories. Go do the things. Because this is why when we do the financial order of operations, when you get to step eight, because remember, you, you can't get past step seven until you've saved 25 and invested 25% of your gross income. Step eight is supposed to be liberating. I mean, because that's why when we talk about prepaid expenses and other things, I mean, for some people, that's where they get into rental property. So, yes, that's an asset that's going to work for you. But for other people, it's planning for that taking the whole family to Australia, or they, maybe this is where they're buying the Tesla car and things like that. And I love that our system allows you to feel confident that you're paying yourself first. The rest should feel liberating. Because I think I, I, people who are good at saving and builders, you are a builder of wealth. Um, you have trouble with the consumption side. And that's actually to be commended, but we also need to give you some some guardrails so you can feel comfortable Hey, it's okay if I if I spend and enjoy and build memories because um, the, the money is a tool. It's not something that because there's a fine line between mutant and miser, and I want to make sure you stay on the healthy side of that. Hey man, it's not easy though. Financial yeah. mutants, we all struggle with this. Uh, literally, I feel like you were sitting in our content meeting this morning because um, right, it's Prime Day today, right? And one of the things that my wife and I have practiced is we are we're really healthy savers. We blow, you know, we we save the appropriate percentage plus some. So uh, I try to like let that be my guilt free mechanism. But this morning I was like, hey Brian, I want to go buy this thing. And look, I can afford it. It's a piece of tech, and I can afford it. And I was like, oh my god, I just hate spending money. I just hate spending money. You're like, Bo, buy it. Bo, just do it. Bo, just get it. You want it? You've been talking about it for a week. Just go do the thing. Uh, but it's not easy. If a lot of us financial mutants, we just don't like spending money. It's not sure. a fun thing to do uh, unless it's a small enough number that we're like, okay, that's sort of superfluous. That doesn't matter. What the 25% does is it allows yourself to it allows you to free yourself from that guilt. So behaviorally, how do I approach it? I like to think about things, right? So even when I do make a big purchase, whether it be a kind of big purchase or a really big purchase, I never buy impulsively. I never buy the day that I have an idea. Uh, if I want something, I might do a little bit of research on it, make sure it's actually what I want. Then I kind of sit on it for a while. My wife, this drives her nuts because I'll do it with like d- like dumb stuff, like a pair of shoes or a new hat that I want or whatever. Like, I don't know if I want it. I don't know if I want it. I don't know if I want it. Well, what I know is if I still am talking about it and thinking about it four days later, five days later, it's probably a pretty good indication it's not an impulsive purchase. It's something, okay, I actually do want this thing so I can spend the money on it no matter what it costs because I know that I'm saving and putting the money aside that I need to be putting aside for other things. So you put a cool off period I'll kind of cool in big period. purchases. Right. Yep. Um, I, I do because I, I always want to be the voice of reality to if you have unique goals though, because we have people reach out, they want to retire, you know, not at the normal 60 plus range. They want to retire in their 40s or 50s. That's going to put a little more pressure on what your savings rate has to be. But for the, the typical person who's retiring post 60, um, 25% is supposed to be a liberation um, threshold. Once you cross that, go have fun, build memories, go book that trip, you know, live the life because you built that great, big, beautiful tomorrow and you're, and you're doing all the steps that needed. Um, enjoy life, Greg, because you only get one opportunity here. Just make sure it's purposeful and that you're actually doing the steps to, to create the plan. Mm-hmm. 